Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the air handler operation with electric strip heating, and we're going over how this all works, and once you know how it works, you can troubleshoot it, and we're going to be going over the components such as the transformer, the fan timer control board, the sequencer, the thermal limit, and also the thermal fuse. Also, make sure to check out Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning Paperback and eBook available at our website at acservicetech.com and also at amazon.com. Coming into our breaker, we have 240 volts, 120 volt leg here, and another 120 volt leg here, and then we have our ground. Coming out of the breaker, we have 240 volts, and that, that heads over to our transformer, and it enters as 240 volts, and on the opposite side over here, and right here, we have 24 volts. So this is our 24 volt hot, which is our red wire, and 24 volts comes over to our fan timer control board and it enters on the XR terminal. And what happens is it has to then go through, this 24 volts has to go through this uh, fuse right here, and the fuse in this case is intact, and then it comes over to the R and you have 24 volts right there. So as well, you also have this blue wire coming off of the transformer and it comes over to the the control board right here on the XC and that connects right over to the C terminal. And you have your low voltage thermostat wires right here and so if you're trying to power a digital thermostat you can apply 24 volts to it right here and then you have your path back which is the common. Now when you're trying to turn your fan on what happens inside the thermostat is that R and G they touch just like this and so you have 24 volts coming from this green wire over to this control board on the G terminal. And when that happens, the control board waits about seven seconds before it ends up uh, activating this relay right here. So there's a, a delay for when it's going to turn on the relay and a delay for when it shuts off the relay. Now, inside this relay, there's just a, there's a little relay that opens and closes contacts. So right here you have your common terminal, and then over here on the, on the bottom here you have your normally closed, and the top one is your normally open. So between normally open and common, that means that they are normally open contacts. When you end up powering the relay inside this black box, after your seven seconds of applying 24 volts at the G, those normally open contacts are going to close and the contact between common and the normally closed, what's going to happen after that seven seconds is they're going to open up. So over here you have your input high voltage and then coming over to this terminal is where you're going to power your blower motor. So this is going to be one of the 220 volt taps that make up the 240 volts that goes to the blower motor. The other leg of the 240 volts is right here. So you're going to be powering the blower motor right here and right here. And there's a hole, there happens to be a hole right here that goes down to the blower motor, but that's where you would have your, your wires attached to. If you have extra speed wires for your blower motor, they get attached to the, the park terminals right here. In this case, it says M1 and M2. So those are not connected to anything. It's just a safe location for you to put the blower motor taps that you're not using. So in reference to these contacts right here, when you turn your fan on at your, your G terminal, you put 24 volts here, you wait seven seconds, and then the normally open contact closes. You are then powering your blower motor because you have 120 volts from here. Remember that your, your breaker right here is supplying 240 volts right here. You have 120 volt leg here and 120 volt leg here. This one's attached to your blower motor all the time, and this one is going to the normally open side of this relay. Once this relay closes after seven seconds, it's going to apply power to the C terminal and then over to the blower motor. So then your blower motor has the 240 volts to operate. So that's during just normal fan mode when you connect your, your red and G wire together. Now that could happen when you're just turning the fan on or when you're turning your cooling on and inside your thermostat, it touches R and Y and R and G. So that's when it would turn that blower motor on. Now when you're trying to turn your, your heat on, so in this case we have our electric resistance heat, when you touch these two wires together and R touches W, this white wire goes right into this plug assembly. You notice that it doesn't go to this fan timer control board. It goes through the plug 
And if you follow this white wire, it goes right to the base of the sequencer. So this sequencer, I have a, another video on the sequencer, and it's not a relay, but it's a uh, thermal disk on the inside that, that pushes up and down on rods on the inside here. And this pan heater flexes the thermal disk. So when you're applying 24 volts to the bottom of this pan heater, and then you have this blue common wire coming out and going back to the transformer on the common, you are heating up that thermal disk, and what you're doing is you are closing these two sets of contacts on the sequencer. So there's two layers right here. Here's an up-close view of the sequencer, and it's not a relay. It has a thermal disk at the bottom. I have a whole other video on the sequencer and the troubleshooting and taking it all apart down in the description section below, so you can go ahead and check it out there. But in reference to this video, how this works is you apply 24 volts down here, and you have two layers of normally open contacts. So they don't close until they're, they're meeting a time requirement based on the thermal disk flexing on the inside of here. So once you apply 24 volts to the pan heater down here, the top contacts right here close after 1 to 20 seconds. Then you have the lower level down here close after 30 to 90 seconds. Then when you remove the 24 volts off the pan heater, the lower level is the first one to open back up again after 1 to 30 seconds with the 24 volts off of the sequencer. Then the top level right here is the last one to open up after 30 to 90 seconds. So what I want you to remember is when you're applying power to this, the contacts at the top are the first ones to close, and when you remove the 24 volt power, they're the last one to open back up again. So now that you're familiar with the sequencer, once you apply 24 volts with this white wire to the pan heater, and then you have your common as the path back, back to the 24 volt side of the transformer, what's gonna happen is you have this hot wire right here from the breaker, 120 volt hot, and after the first one to 20 seconds, it comes over and it touches these contacts right here. So you're applying 120 volts over through this purple wire right here, and this purple wire, if you follow it, comes over to the normally closed contact on the, the blower relay right here. So this normally closed contact, without any 24 volts on the G, what's gonna happen is this 120 volts is gonna be normally closed over to your blower motor, and it's gonna apply 240 volts to the blower motor. So the other thing is this 120 volts connects over to this contact right here, and if you follow this, it comes right over to here. It goes through the thermal limit, which is a safety device, and then it goes into the electric strip heater. As well, at the other side of the electric strip heater over here, you have your other 120 volt attached from your breaker. So now you're applying 120 volts here, right here, and 120 volts here, and that's how you're powering your electric strip heater here and here. So that's the first electric strip heater that turns on. Now remember that your, your second tier down here, your second level, is then going to end up closing after 30 to 90 seconds of powering the, the pan heater at the bottom. So you gotta take a look at this red wire right here. This one's coming from your breaker. So you have 120 volts connecting over to this wire and it's now inputting over at your thermal limit switch, and it's coming right into your electric strip heater. As well, you have this wire coming from your breaker with the other 120 volts. So now you're applying 240 volts to this other electric strip heater at the top. Now, if you were to disconnect right here at your thermostat, so your, your red and white are no longer connected because your the call for heat in the house or the building is satisfied, what's gonna happen is this lower level is gonna be the first one that opens back up again which means that you're going to stop your power to the electric strip heater first up top here. Then, after another 30 to 90 seconds, this, this top level right here is going to open back up again, and it's no longer going to be sending the 120 volts here. So then you're shutting off your power to the lower level of the electric strip heating. At the same time, because this is no longer connected, you're no longer sending your 120 volts over to the fan relay over here at the normally closed contact. So now your, your blower motor would end up shutting off unless you still have a call on the G wire for your, your fan to stay on. So that's how the electric strip heating works in an air handler. And this right here, I wanna go over this thermal limit right here, and this is a thermal fuse. 
this thermal limit switch right here is going to be closed and it's going to open on a temperature rise and that's a safety. So if your blower happens to not be working, maybe the capacitor's bad or the blower motor's stuck or bad, then what's gonna happen is these thermal limit switches are gonna stop uh, the electric strip heating from working. It's gonna open up the electrical circuit on a temperature rise. So this says L150 minus 45F. So anytime you see an L in the front of a thermal limit switch, that means that it's going to open on a temperature rise and the first number is gonna be when it's supposed to open up the electrical circuit. So it's going to open up the electrical circuit at 150 degrees and it's not going to close it back down again until it cools off in there and it's going to take 150 minus 45 so that means it's not going to close the contacts back down again until it gets down to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. In other applications if you ever see an F at the front and just realize this is upside down right now so it's over on the left hand side if you ever see an F over there that means that it's going to close on a temperature rise. So it's going to be open and it's going to close once the temperature gets higher. So that would be on a F1, but this one happens to be an L1, which means that it's going to be closed and it's going to open on a temperature rise. I have a whole other video on thermal limit switches and testing them down in the description section below. And as well, over here, right here, you have a thermal fuse. So fuse just looks like this and it's non-resettable. There is a pellet on the inside that's going to open up the electrical circuit and it's not going to allow the the power to go through. So this is going to have to get replaced with the same version and you're going to have to replace it with the same uh, same model number. So this is a micro temp fuse. I'm going to show you what it looks like inside this chamber in reference to the electric strip heating and then we're going to go ahead and troubleshoot each of these with our multimeter. This is where we'll be testing for our electric strip heaters. And here is our thermal limit switch, and here's our thermal fuse. So you know we have no power on the breaker right here. So we have no power to this air handler, and we have our electric strip heater disconnected. And we're checking our resistance value. We're checking to make sure that the electric strip heater is not shorted to ground. So you see that we're reading OL, which that means it's good. There is no problem there. And then we're gonna go ahead and check this side, electric strip heater. And you see once again that we're reading OL, which means there is no connection whatsoever, open line or over limit. So that's good. And now we'll go ahead and read the uh, electrical resistance across the strip heater itself. And it is intact. You can see that we're reading 15.1 ohms. So you do the same thing for the lower coil as well. And in reference to checking our thermal limit switch, you know we have this disconnected right now, so we can go ahead and check from this tap right here, right over to here, to see if it's open. Now it's about 70 degrees where we're located at right now, and you can see that it reads 0, 0.0 ohms of, a, of resistance. So that means that the contacts are fully closed, and there is no pitting on the contacts, it is good, and so there's no problem with that one. So if we were gonna check this lower level down here, we need to remove one of the wires connected to this thermal limit switch. And so we can just go ahead and pull this one off and do the same test. And so we read very close to 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. So that, that thermal limit switch is good. Now you see that we're going about 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and now you see that with my with my probe kind of tensioned a little bit more, I'm reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. So that was just a loose connection at the alligator clip. But that thermal limit switch is good. Now if we were gonna check this thermal fuse, all we need to do is just pull one of the wires off of that, and we can go ahead and check that as well. So we're just checking the electrical resistance, and the thing is, with, with all this testing, you can always test these assemblies in a safe way with the power off. So I'm showing you how to check the electrical resistance, strip heaters with the power off, the thermal limit, and also our thermal fuse. And you can even check the sequencer by just disconnecting the high voltage wires off of it and checking across your contacts with resistance. So you could power the lower level with 24 volts and check the contacts with resistance, just like in the video that I have linked down in the description section below on the sequencers. So anyway, right here on our thermal fuse, you see that we are reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. So if one of your electrical strip heaters is not working or both, you can go ahead and troubleshoot what the problem is. As well, with our transformer, it's very easy to troubleshoot a transformer. You just go ahead and apply your 240 volts to the one side and then you can come over to the control board up here and you can read with a multimeter 
between R and C to see if you have 24 volts. So that means if you, if you measure between R and C with 24 volts with your multimeter probes, and that means that your fuse is intact, your transformer is good, and you are getting ready to send your voltage to the thermostat. So that's how the air handler works with electric resistance strip heating attached. And if you're looking for other free resources, uh, such as uh, thermostat wiring, we have a bunch of thermostat wiring diagrams and other articles and, and resources over at acservicestick.com. Also, make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning paperback and ebook, both available at our website at acservicestick.com. We have our quick reference cards available there too. And also, the quick reference cards and paperback are both available over at amazon.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.